And so here you have Walter Lippmann, probably the most influential political thinker in the United States, who is essentially saying that the basic mechanism of the mass mind is unreason, is irrationality, is animality. He believes that the mob in the street, which is how he sees ordinary people, are people who are driven not by their minds but by their spinal cords. The notion of kind of animal drives, unconscious instinctual drives lurking beneath the surface of civilization. And so they started looking towards psychological science as a way of understanding the mechanisms by which the popular mind works, specifically with the goal of figuring out how to understand how to apply those mechanisms to strategies for uh, social control. Edward Bernays was fascinated by Lippmann's arguments and also saw a way to promote himself by using them. In the 1920s, he began to write a series of books which argued that he had developed the very techniques Lippmann was calling for. By stimulating people's inner desires and then sating them with consumer products, he was creating a new way to manage the irrational force of the masses. He called it the engineering of consent. Democracy, to my father, was a wonderful concept, but I don't think he felt that all those publics out there would m had reliable judgment, uh, and that they, that they could that they very easily might vote for the wrong man or want the wrong thing, so that they had to be guided from above. Uh, it's a enlightened despotism in a sense. You appeal to their desires and their unrecognized longings, that sort of thing. That you can tap into their deepest desires or their deepest fears and use that to your own purposes. And then, in 1928, a president came to power who agreed with Bernays. President Hoover was the first politician to articulate the idea that consumerism had become the central motor of American life. After his election, he told a group of advertisers and public relations men, you have taken over the job of creating desire and have transformed people into constantly moving happiness machines. Machines which have become the key to economic progress. What was beginning to emerge in the 1920s was a new idea of how to run mass democracy. At its heart was the consuming self, which not only made the economy work, but was happy and docile, and so created a stable society. Both Bernays and Littmann's concept of managing the masses takes the idea of democracy and it turns it into a palliative. It turns it into uh, giving people some kind of feel-good medication that will respond to an immediate pain or an immediate yearning, but will not alter the objective circumstances one iota. I mean, democracy really, the idea of democracy at its heart was about changing the relations of power that had governed the world for so long. And Bernays concept of democracy was one of maintaining the relations of power even if it meant that one needed to sort of stimulate the psychological lives of the public. And in fact, in his mind, that was what was necessary. That if you can keep stimulating the irrational self, then leadership can basically go on doing what it wants to do.